Hi there, I'm going to do a quick demo on how to move data from AlterX over into Power BI. So we're going to jump into AlterX here and start a new workflow. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab some data and uh, for this video I'm going to use the Titanic data that I used in the predictive uh, video for the Titanic data set. So um, to get that data if you just go out to uh, kegel.com and click on the Titanic machine learning from disaster competition, go to the data tab there and find uh, the train.csv is the one that we want and download it. Uh, I'll post the links to all of the websites that I'm going to use in this video in the description. Uh, so get that data, download it. Uh, I already have it saved to my computer, so we'll jump back into Alteryx. What we'll do is we'll take an input data node here. We'll drop it onto the canvas. Uh, in fact, let me just zoom in a little bit here to make this bigger. And uh, I'm going to now I'll go ahead and get that Titanic data file. I have it saved already to my downloads folder, and I only want the train data from here. All right, uh, and there's a couple of tips and tricks that I want to want to really want to talk about before we get started with with getting data into Power BI, and that's that we should get things formatted and designed really well in Alteryx before we send it over to Power BI because there are some limitations with the service once the data is in Power BI. Although those limitations are slowly starting to be removed with new iterations of the Power BI service, but it's still good to do most of your work in formatting in here. This is just an intro, so I'm not going to do a ton of formatting, but one thing I do want to do is take in an auto field uh, node here. And what that's going to do is just choose the best data type for the data that's coming into this data set. Uh, and uh, then I'll take a select node here just because I want to view what what format the data is in. And then um, we'll do the Power BI connection in a moment. So let me just run this real quick here. And when it comes out, uh, what you'll see is that in, in the select node, what the auto field did is it made the passenger ID an integer uh, the survived in the class uh, a byte, and you can also see it down here in the preview. Um, the age is a double because the age sometimes contained half ages. Uh, it made the siblings and the parents a byte, and also made the fare a double here, so we can do some mathematical calculations on it. All right, normally I would go in and I would I would code the embarked field because this should be Southampton. Uh, Queenstown and Cherbourg, but we're going to leave it the way that it is in here and we'll just deal with it in Power BI. Uh, so without that, all these would have come over as string fields and when I import them into Power BI service, they would come as strings and be very difficult to change and do any calculations on without running some sort of uh, functions or macros on it. So we'll just leave it the way that it is um, with the auto field. All right, now what we need to do is uh, get the Power BI uh, connector in here. So to do that, if you don't already have it, you'll have to go out to the gallery. It's just gallery.alterx.com. And in this gallery, we're just going to type uh, Power BI and then um, search for that particular text. And we want Publish to Power BI. This tool here is the one that we want. Download it and install it. The directions for downloading it and installing it are here if you haven't done a macro before. It's not difficult. These things are pretty trivial. All right, so back in Alteryx then, uh, I've already got the connector installed, so you'll find it right here. We're just going to drag and drop it onto our canvas there. We need to give this data set a name in Power BI, so I'm just going to call it uh, Titanic uh, Data from Kaggle as the data set name and the table, I'm just going to call it Titanic. And that's the table name that the users see uh, when they log into the Power BI service and interact with it on a report. Uh, and then we're going to create it as a new data set. All right, in the advanced tab, uh, this is where there's some tips and tricks here. So in the interactive authorization, what that means is when I run this particular workflow, it's going to prompt me to log into Power BI, and it will do that every time unless I choose Use Refresh Token. This won't work if you're going to schedule this as a job in the uh, server or just as a scheduled job using Task Scheduler. If you do it that way, uh, this method won't work. 
If you want it to be a scheduled job, then what you'll need to do is use hard-coded credentials. It's just going to be your Power BI email address, the password that you use for your Microsoft account, and then a client ID. To get the client ID, go back to Chrome here. There's a uh, website dedicated to getting your client ID. It's dev.powerbi.com slash apps. Little one page, one page form you fill out. And um, when you're done and you hit click register app, you'll get a client ID and a secret. You just need the client ID. You don't need to know about the client secret for now. You only need to do this one time and it'll work for all the other apps that you're going to publish through Alteryx. All right, so that's the method of, um, of getting it to work. I'm going to just choose the interactive method right now so you can see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and process this data set here. All right, it ran through. Um, I've run this previously, so the prompt didn't come up, but normally there would be a window asking you to log into Power BI. So I don't, uh, I don't need to worry about that right now. Going back to Power BI then, I'm going to do it two ways. Uh, and this is another important distinction. So in the Power BI service itself, it's going to publish that data set to my workspace. And if I go over to data set, there you'll see it's published there. As of right now, you're not able to publish to a different workspace. It's always going to publish to my workspace by default or your workspace. That's what it's going to do. Uh, so that's a limitation. Uh, from here then, if you want to, you can create a report and you know, we can do this pretty simply. You'll notice that it picked up on which fields were numeric and automatically starts adding calculations to it. So just a simple, you know, stupid little pie chart here. Um, we can do the uh, passenger ID as the values and uh, we just want to do a distinct count of those and then maybe group it by their gender here. <clears> then <throat> you can see more males and females on the Titanic there. So very basic. I can save this report, save it, and it becomes a report. That's method number one. Method number two of getting the data in here is to launch the Power BI service. So we can go ahead and, or Power BI desktop. So we can launch the desktop. And this is sort of a newer feature. I think it's within the last couple of months. And um, I'm going to bring it over here. What we can do now is go to get data. And then from get data, let's choose online services and we'll choose Power BI service and we'll connect to the Power BI service. When I do that, I should get a prompt that's going to ask me uh, what data set I want from the service. Uh, so I remember it's always going to go into my workspace. So that's where that's where I'll find it, the uh, Titanic data set from Kaggle. I can load that. And now I can go in and do the same things that I did before. There's still some limitations here in the way that some of the formatting uh, works. You'll notice if I if I click on one of the fields, being able to change the data type, the format, all of that is disabled. So again, do the work inside Alteryx. So when you publish it out to the Power BI service, it's already in the format that you're going to need to use it in uh, because that stuff's going to be turned off. So those are the two methods you can use to build your reports once you've published your data set uh, out to Power BI.